welcome to Fresh Quilting. I'm Catherine of Running Doe Quilts, and I'm here today to show you how to turn a mini quilt into a pillow that can also still be displayed as a mini quilt on your wall or as a table topper. So to start with, you're gonna need the mini quilt that you want to turn into a pillow, um, some fabric for backing, some binding, just like you would on a regular quilt. Uh, you can use your favorite binding technique, uh, just about all of them work. Uh, some piecing thread, some general slow sewing supplies like your mat, your cutter, your ruler, your scissors, your pins, um, and an ironing station. And then you'll be ready to go. So to start with, you need to square up your mini quilt. Uh, this is just like you would square up a regular quilt, but on a smaller scale. Uh, so I just like to do this and cut. A little known secret of squaring up quilts is that you can wiggle a little bit on the sides and it's not the end of the world, uh, but your binding is gonna go on much, much smoother if you keep your corners good and square. So I like to take a square ruler to the corners and make sure they are as 90 degrees as possible. And you can see I was a little bit wild with the piecing, so that little piece sticks out, but I can square it up and my binding is gonna lay great even with that. So turn it, make sure you're going square, line it up, cut the next side. Get that corner nice and 90 degrees. Uh, this is one of those edges that I just sort of finish however. So I need to make sure I get in enough that I don't have too much batting on the side. Keep going. Straighten it out. Square it up. And last side should be square from doing all those corners. And I can just square it off and call it good. So now we have our top and we quilted it and we got it ready just like any old uh, mini quilt that we were ready to have. Um, but before we bind it, we just have to do one more step to make it into a pillow. So we're gonna take, take some fabric and you can make any sort of pillow back that you want. Uh, I personally like invisible zippers, but I don't want anybody to run away screaming when I mention the technique of zippers. So we're gonna do an envelope back because it's a lot simpler. So you're gonna need enough. Um, I really don't love turning and hemming and pressing and hemming. So I cut big enough pieces that I can take it and I can fold it in half like so. Press it really good and top stitch. And this is one half. And then I'll do the same thing with the other piece. And you'll notice that this is really bigger than I need it to be. I prefer that my pillow back is bigger than my top for the same reason that quilt backings are generally bigger than the top before you quilt. You wanna leave room for error, for shifting, for anything like that. And also you don't really wanna do any more math than you have to. So you press these, you top stitch these, and you end up with these nice, beautiful little quilt backs. So you wanna overlap them enough, about a hand's width, uh, so that they don't peak uh, if your pillow is stretching them out. So overlap them just a little bit, but make sure they're far enough apart that you're covering your whole back. And this is really pretty approximate. And then you're gonna stack them, and it's kinda like making a quilt sandwich again. So you're gonna have right side down, so wrong sides together, wrong side of the pillow, wrong side of the backing, and you're gonna stitch these together with a basting stitch. Uh, before that, you wanna make sure that your back doesn't shift, so you can either do a basting stitch through here, or I like to just pin some pins right like this. So basically pinning it closed so it doesn't move or gape or twist or anything while I'm basting. Pin, pin, pin. Watch your fingers. It's a great idea to keep all your pins going the same direction so you only have one way to worry about pins. Keeping it nice and straight. Then layer. This is kind of just like making a quilt sandwich again, uh, except the back opens. So. And then you're gonna pin all the way around the edges. So, pin. Pointing your pins in is a great idea to save your fingers from getting stabbed as you're going around the quilt. This also, pinning this way, you shouldn't probably sew over your pins, but if they're this way, it's a whole lot easier if you accidentally sew over one, you're much less likely to hit it with your needle and break a needle and, uh, okay. So all the way around, you're gonna keep going. And then you're gonna take it over to your machine and you're gonna baste it. So bring it over here. Make sure your machine is set at a basting stitch. Uh, if you don't know what that is, it's just a really extra long stitch. So the longest your machine can go. 
And then I don't like to use the guide when I baste. I like to take a really big, kind of wild um, basting stitch all the way around the edges. Um, just, I'm gonna be able to see it. A contrasting thread is great because it makes it easier to find and pull out. You can stitch closer to the edge and in the quarter inch seam allowance if that's what you prefer because you don't have to pull it out later. But the trouble with that is, is the closer you get to the edge, the more likely you are to cause shifting. So I kind of like to go, you know, go wild, have fun basting. You're gonna pull it out. You're not ever gonna see it again. Uh, make sure you pull out any pins before you stitch over them. Do as I say, not as I do. Um, so this machine quilting was done, this, this mini quilt was already quilted and machine quilted and everything before I got to this step. So I had finished everything I needed to on my mini quilt except for the binding before I got to adding the back. So, so, base, base, base. And there you go. So you're gonna cut your thread. You're gonna bring it back over to the table. And it's gonna be time to trim it. So first flip it over, make sure everything stayed pretty flat and happy. I like to use my rotary cutter to trim because it's faster for me, but you can also use scissors if you're more comfortable with it. And you're gonna trim off that excess backing. So it's kind of like squaring your quilt up again. So square it up, get it off all the way around. And then after you've done this, it's just like finishing your quilt. Um, you can bind it any way you like. I'm gonna show you how I bind it though. Um, I like to cut my strips at two and a quarter. A lot of people do two and a half. It's really whatever you're comfortable with. Uh, I would try a few different widths and a few different seam allowances, stitching them on and see what makes you happiest, that gives you the fullest binding. So you can see this, it looks just like a mini quilt that's ready to bind, but it's got the back already opening up. So then we've got our binding, pre-cut, and we're gonna stitch it around to the edges. So back to the sewing machine. So I like to leave a tail. Um, I need enough of a tail that I can work with it when I'm done, but not so much that it's in my way. On mini quilts, it can be a little bit trickier to find space for this, so I tend to start sewing near a corner. Stitch. Um, we've got regular stitch length, quarter inch seam allowance. Here we go. So I like to stop just a little ways from the corner, cut, and then I'm gonna fold back right here and then fold back down. So back and then down. It makes a nice little miter. Then we're gonna come back on top. I'm gonna stitch, keep stitching with that quarter inch. A back stitch is not a bad idea to make it uh, stay stitched in those corners. And you're gonna keep going all the way around. So you get to do this a few more times. So stitch, stitch, stitch. I'll show you one more corner. So stop just a little bit before the end. Cut your thread. And then you're gonna fold back. See how it's lining up with that edge right there? And then down, see how the top is right there. That fold is right there at that edge. So go up. Switch back down. I like to give it a little bit of a tie off right there and continue all the way around your quilt. So, you're gonna come back over here. You've stitched all the way around. This was your original tail right here. And this is your original piece, or the, the end that you have left off right here. So, what I like to do is overlap them. And you can see I had a mitered edge on my beginning. So, take this. I like to mark where it ends either with a marking pen or with a sewing pen like this. And I mark where it ends and what angle it was at so I can know, because I know that I just need to go half an inch over. That gives me enough space for both the seam allowances. So um, a square ruler, I can line up this half inch mark where that pin is and at the right angle, I can cut it right there. And then these two pieces, when I go back over to the sewing machine and stitch them with my quarter inch seam allowance are gonna line up perfectly. And after that, I can take it and I can pull the binding around to the backside and I can hand stitch all the way around. I can pull out my basting stitch and I will have a beautiful mini quilt. It'll look 
just like a regular mini quilt, but with a little secret that there is a pocket for a pillow. You can stuff your favorite pillow in there or make your very own for the custom sizes. And that's it.